Hey everyone, uh, we'll get started here in just a minute. We'll kind of let people uh, take, a, take a second and get settled in. We still have quite a few joining. Okay, it looks like everyone uh, uh, has made it in that's going to be here for now. So I'm going to go ahead and kick this off. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for attending today's Alliance uh, virtual session number 7215. Uh, this uh, um, presentation is called PeopleSoft Lease Administration Case Studies for Higher Ed and Public Sector. Uh, my name is Tom Chambers. I work for the Higher Education User Group. Thanks for attending. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes here. Uh, you are all on mute, so we can hear our presenters today without any background noise. If you have a question, please submit your question at any time during the presentation in the Q&A box. That's found in your Zoom dashboard. Um, due to the um, number of people in attendance, we will take questions at the end. Uh, our presenters, uh, Randy and Lax, have actually uh, mentioned that they may answer some questions along the way. Uh, via the, the Q&A box if you do submit them. So uh, you can do that as well. Just please make sure that all of the questions submitted are appropriate and professional, of course. Uh, and we do ask that they're related to the content. Also, uh, any technical difficulties along the way, uh, feel free to drop those right in the chat box and I'll try and take care of those for you at that point. Uh, this session is currently being recorded. Uh, and it will be uploaded to the Alliance website um, at the end of the day. Uh, with that, I'd now like to pass the floor over to uh, Randy Johnson and Lax Rayala from Spear MC. Uh, Randy, the floor is yours, or Lax, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Tom. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna tag team throughout. So I'll go ahead and share my screen now. Um, and I think it's my screen too. Perfect. All right. We're able to see. This is a milestone. Fantastic. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, thanks for the introduction, Tom. Uh, we are here to talk about lease administration. And uh, because this is the higher ed user group, our focus is going to be on GASB 87 and, and really the differences between GASB 87 and the other accounting bases. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what we've done in the past with, with a couple of other public sector uh, organizations. Um, and for the most part, you are very lucky. So uh, if, for those of you that joined because you believed Marcus Bodie was going to be co-presenting with me, um, at first you may feel disappointed. We've, we've made a substitute, but uh, when, you, when you realize that uh, his substitute is Lax Rayala, uh, the foremost authority in PeopleSoft lease administration, uh, you will be very pleasantly surprised. LAX leads our, our entire le uh, life cycle, uh, asset life cycle practice uh, at Spear MC and provides uh, much of the lease administration training that we've been doing since that module came out. LAX was actually one of the godfathers of the module, um, helping to uh, co-created in in essence uh, with a project that we worked on together back in uh, uh, many years ago um, and so I will introduce myself and Lax will introduce himself we'll go through a few slides um, the slides are screenshots of, of just the configuration the considerations that you need to make and we specifically eliminated as many as we could, but wanted to highlight those where uh, GASB 87 was applicable and where we could call out the, uh, the considerations that you'd be needing to make. Um, and we're going to show you a, a comparison between GASB 87, IFRS 16, um, and, and FASB ASC 842. And then we'll dive into the product itself and LAX will do a light demonstration. Um, I say light product demonstration. Um, it depends on how long I talk and how much time Lax has at the end. 
uh, we'll see how far we can get. But uh, uh, our hope is that we can give you a really, really good feeling for what it's like to implement um, lease administration, um, particularly as it applies to the GASB 87 regulations. So without further ado, I'm gonna dive into the presenters. A um, Little bit of false advertising you might notice on my webcam, my hair is not nearly as uh, dark as that picture. Um, I've been at this for a very, very long time. Um, Lax and I actually worked together, um, I, I can't even remember how many years ago at, uh, at IBM, um, and now we're back together doing, doing these types of projects and still focused on, on this wonderful product of PeopleSoft. Um, Lax, why don't you take just a moment, introduce yourself, and I'll dive into the meat of the, uh, of the deck here. Hi, my name is Lax Rayala, uh, and thanks for that uh, nice introduction, Randy. Um, I and Randy have worked in IBM uh, like in 2011-12 timeframe. Uh, that's when we made one of the PeopleSoft module like real estate management uh, to work for non-real estate. And that was the starting point of me getting into the leasing. Since then, probably done like over 20 implementations of lease admin, both under 840 and AC 842 guidelines and also IFRS. We do have some GASB 87 stuff that's going on. Uh, we are working on a solution for the gaps that Oracle uh, was not planning to address at this point of time. Yeah, right, back. thanks Lax, uh, and we will dive into that. I can't wait to talk about our solution, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Lax is the, uh, is the individual who is designing um, and co-building that, uh, that solution. Um, without uh, without the, about SPIRMC slides, I feel naked, so we're going to include a few here. Um, SPIRMC, we are a full services PeopleSoft uh, implementation uh, upgrade managed services organization. We're a platinum partner, and, and I'm pleased to say that we are truly a partner with Oracle in, in the sense that uh, uh, they did come to us when when there was this known gap in in GASB compliance, um, and asked if we would be interested in putting together a uh, a complete solution. Um, from time to time, if uh, Chris Allen is uh, overloaded, we are asked to come in and do demonstrations of the product. So that that is a a true partnership with with Oracle and. Um, and it, it really is a testament to our strength in the PeopleSoft bloodline that, that we can continue to uh, make our top priority. Um, we're all over the country. Uh, we've, got, we've got global projects. Our, we, our offices are in the US only, but we have, we have several clients now um, who have implemented IR, IFRS 16 uh, on a global basis. And that's been, uh, that's been quite exciting to see our, our global reach expand. Uh, but we have offices in every time zone in the United States. Um, well, I say that uh, in, in Arizona, sometimes they're on <laughs> on the West Coast time zone, sometimes they're in mountain. I guess technically they're mountain standard year round. Uh, but these are where we are, and uh, and and we we essentially go where our clients are and uh, and continue to thrive. <laughs> Just, just two, two more points. One of one of our key focuses in uh, in PeopleSoft has been lease management, lease administration. Um, we believe that with the uh, with the compliance regulations coming down, that uh, that there's a lot of pent up demand for this work, uh, but the module is is not well understood. And that's why we've developed a three-day training. This is a very, very small snippet of our three-day implementation training. Um, and there's actually an option to add two days of, of configuration workshop to that training. Um, we're doing a virtual version of that coming up in June, and that is dedicated purely to the GASB 87 compliance. Um, and as Lax pointed out, that's when we're going to roll out and, and demonstrate and show the SPIRMC solution that bridges the gap on the revenue side of compliance. Um, and 
as luck would have it for you, anyone attending the session, uh, actually any anyone attending Alliance um, is able to get a discount code if you're interested in that three-day training. Uh, details are on our website. Um, if you're interested in the webinar series, the free webinar series that we have, uh, we've had a series of webinars. This week, obviously, we didn't because of the Alliance Conference, but we've been, we've been having webinars. There are recorded uh, webinars out there, some really great ones on our decustomization series um, and our Get Current series. Uh, we've got a few more and we're looking for ideas. So if you can give us feedback, maybe in the surveys at the end of this session, what additional webinars are you looking for um, in the very near future? We're always interested in adding more. Uh, and then of course, uh, our virtual training, which is small snippets of training, usually four, four hours in duration, maybe a day, uh, small bite-sized chunks with the exception of lease admin, which is the three-day three, three day training. You can find all of that on our website. Um, that's all I want to talk about, Spirit of Sea. I hope it wasn't too, uh, too salesy for you. Really, why are we here? We're here to talk about lease administration in PeopleSoft and in particular how PeopleSoft is handling GASB 87. Um, with that, Lax, I'll continue to display. If you want to just talk and let me know when you want me to go to the next slide, happy to uh, happy to turn the mic over to you. Sure. Thank you, Randy. Yep. If you go to the next slide. So when we are implementing the um, lease administration, uh, what you see on the right side uh, is a list of things uh, that we need to um, think about our address um, like installation options is where we actually activate the um, GASP 87 uh, adoption and of course business units uh, region codes lease types most of them up to asset categories um, are pretty straightforward once we come to asset categories that where the uh, bulk of the work would going to be uh, defining what categories you need uh, to accommodate your um, accounting because asset categories are directly tied to your accounting entry templates. Then as part of the leasing guidelines, we would be expected to carry new cost types, um, three new cost types uh, that are required. And if you don't use it, so that's something that has to be uh, introduced. And of course, the lease asset profiles, um, which we typically make categories and our profiles as one-to-one. -one. Then the big chunk of it is actually the accounting entry templates that books the right of use asset, uh, the lease obligation, um, and also the monthly um, you know, interest depreciation and interest expense. So the accounting entry templates is where the bulk of the work is going to be. That's going to be a repetitive process. Um, during the implementation. Then uh, the other one is the accounting rules. If you have the receivable leases, uh, then the accounting will be driven through the accounting rules in lease admin. It doesn't use, um, it partially uses accounting entry templates in asset management, but the revenue accounting is based on the accounting rules. And of course the discount rates uh, that you use for calculating your present value. So, Grant, if okay. you can jump on to the next one. Sure thing. And, and Lex, what I'll point out is we, we actually don't go into detail on all of these. We would in the, in the three-day training. Um, the next series of slides are hopefully pointing out where, uh, where you would have considerations that are slightly different because of GASB 87. At least I think that's where we're going. But uh, I'll let you talk about it, Lex, as we go to the next few slides. Sure. Yeah, this is where we activate the lease admin um, adoption of GASB 87. Um, so this uh, uh, Oracle says is a irreversible process. Uh, so the transition date uh, determines at uh, what point of time you are transitioning to GASB. And of course, there is always ways to kind of circumvent the you know the one-time setup, but uh, this is. Uh, a requirement. This is the first step in implementation to activate the GASB 87. 
and then the automatic lease approval on this screen is allowing whether you want to use the lease workflow or you just want to have same user approve the leases so that gets you there we jump on to next slide yep sorry there we go okay yeah when you activate the lease admin uh, um, in the installation options and on the asset management installation options you see there's something called a lease expense in the middle of the screen on uh, the top section called lease expense that field is not visible until you activate the lease admin uh, installation options and if you do any uh, other setup without those uh, two or three steps then your accounting is going to be wrong so the lease expense has to be mapped uh, on this asset management installation options okay just the one this one and this is an um, the lease administration business unit setup a lease admin business unit setup um, we map the asset management business unit and you have to map the accounts payable business unit and if you use the receivables business uh, receivable leases we are required to map the contracts business unit as well okay and so then lax if i if i could so so the contracts that's revenue contracts right that mm -hmm. that is associated with your your uh, contracts billing and ultimately AR modules? Yes, customer contracts module, yes. Yeah. Okay. And on this screen, uh, you also determine whether you're going to use the AM accounting entry templates uh, for driving your um, non-base rent um, charges. Uh, if you don't use the AM accounting entry templates, then you are required to maintain the accounting rules in lease admin module. One thing that that I noticed lacks was this REM. Is that is that sort of a callback to the real estate management module? That the old name is that what that is? Yeah, the journal template that show that is shown in the demo is called REM, real estate management, and we typically replace that with something appropriate called uh, lease admin as part of an implementation. That is needed for two reasons. Um, one is if you are doing a receivable leases, the straight line accounting needs a journal template. That's where that's coming going to play. On the payable lease side, if you use um, non-base rent items that have escalations, uh, that needs to use a straight line, and you don't use the AM accounting entry template, then it needs that template also. So right. it's more elaborate answer to that, but yeah, no, that's good. I, 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 I wanted to point out one or two of the lessons learned I'm aware of. And uh, w one other question that, uh, that had come up previously uh, was around commitment control. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that enabled for lease administration? It's not enabled. Uh, that's uh, one of the, um, I should not say gas because it's not even a functionality that is available typically in a, a non-commercial um, implement uh, clients we have a purchase order sitting out there for x number of you know whatever dollars that commitment is not relieved because um, the commitment is on probably on a general fund that gets booked and relieved and when the lease gets activated um, but the lease admin itself would not back out anything. So it needs to flow to the general ledger. And from there, we need to do uh, some kind of a work like allocations to kind of back out of the commitment controls. Okay. So, so from a lease administration perspective without POs and, and processing as standard, really all we'll see are, are the actuals coming through without, without pre-encumbrance or encumbrance. Right. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And this is again the same business unit setup at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you would see that recognize um, uh, capital assets under GASB. You would see this only from image 32 and greater. Uh, if you are an image prior to 32, uh, you would not see that checkbox for GASB. Uh, so you have to be at least on 32 and greater to see that uh, GASB checkbox. And then once you do this, what it does is once you activate the checkbox, 
on the lease entry screen, you would see an exam from um, GASB 87 um, is it, uh, an option. Otherwise, that option would not be shown. Sure. Uh, the other important consideration here is um, when we typically what we have seen is clients already have asset management uh, before bringing lease admin. And most of the clients that we work with would have left the lease book off if they didn't maintain the leases in the asset management. So a lease book is a required um, setup. So before we go into the lease admin, we need to update uh, the lease book on the asset management business unit definition. And that would typically be whatever the default book that you use. And that's where the lease accounting would be created. Hey Lex, on uh, the, the numbers of customers that you've, you've delivered implementation services, how many would you say actually did have their leases in asset management? Less than 25% because the asset management lease uh, yeah, functionality, it's 840 uh, compliant. Uh, it was never upgraded to 842. And then the problem was that um, making a change to your lease schedule once it's created was a difficult task. Like if you have a schedule sitting out there for 48 months, if there is a change, you end up deleting all those like you know, remaining 47 lines on the first month manually uh, before rebuilding this stuff. So there were a lot of usability issues. That's why clients uh, didn't um, really want to use asset management leasing, even under 840. So less than 25% is what we have seen right. uh, that have used EAM point. And, and for that reason, um, I, I knew you would answer that way. Uh, we've, we've, we've had to load leases as a part of a lease admin project, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, could you just give some lessons learned real quickly on the, on the lease loader and the things that, uh, that we've found to be uh, beneficial to these folks during a project? Sure. What Oracle delivered was a lease uh, conversion template uh, that was uh, back uh, like I think less than image 10 or something. That conversion template was not updated until 32. When the 32 came, uh, Oracle delivered us a lease conversion template and you could do about 90% or more than 90% of the work using that uh, template. If you line it up correctly, um, there are some uh, some small issues uh, that I, we all learn over a period of time. So you should be able to load the leases uh, using that. And the activation of a lease used to be a manual process, uh, but in image 33, Oracle delivered a batch process to activate the leases. Um, so that's you know even reduces the amount of work you have to do. So just a lot of time what happens, we run into lessons learned is that the clients go into an lease abstraction kind of a project. They have extracted data and then stored in a format that's not uh, going to you know, work with the conversion template. So a lot of time we end up uh, you know, massaging the data and you know, manipulating the data in Excel to right. work for the Excel template. So that's a thought that some everyone needs to kind of, you know, uh, think through saying maybe you know we need to abstract the data in the form which will be used for loading the leases right and, 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 and don't underestimate the amount of time it'll take to corral all of that data from its disparate locations since it's not already in asset management you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make sure that you're collecting that data and when you do it's best to collect it in the format that that the tool um, and really the tool, I think part of the lesson learned is at least GASB 87, you have to be on image 32. If It's best to be on 33 for the automatic activation functionality that exists. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I can promise I won't cut you off anymore, but I'm going to try. Yeah. Yeah, this is the asset management uh, business um, unit book definition. Uh, why we are talking about is that when we create a profile, any new profile that you create for the 
GASB 87 adoption needs to be um, added for all the books. We see typically clients doing only the default book on the profile, and that would cause issues. Of course, you cannot even get past the lease activation. So you have to have every book that is shown on this page to be part of the new profiles that you create in the uh, GASB 87 world. And this is a standard AM business unit features. There's not much here. And the lease admin itself does not um, require anything other than the online reporting uh, that you see on the screen. Uh, other than that, there's no change to this page in the asset management. So here is the accounting entry templates. Uh, so there is the people's have delivered a new way of building the accounting entry templates. We call it NMAS, uh, which basically you go ahead and then uh, create an uncontrolled ID with the right category, and it will show you all the accounts that you need to populate. And when you run a process, the system automatically creates the accounting entry templates for a combination of trans type, cost type, and trans code. So we have seen a single run of for one category could create like 250 or like more than 250 rows uh, in your accounting and templates. Um, if you use transports, it will be a lot more, like uh, 150 to 250 rows is typically what we see um, uh, created by the NMAS. So that kind of reduces the amount of work you have to do to set up the accounting entry templates uh, via the page. I think these probably are, uh, yeah, this is the um, asset profiles. Uh, the asset profiles uh, for gas B87 all needs to be set up as a, a depreciable um, at the category and profile level. Um, so that's why the screen has been shown here. The useful life on this is typically when the asset is created for the lease, it will use um, the lease term as a life, but we do require uh, to enter a lease life here which place into the secondary book. If you have on the default book, the system will use the life from the lease. On the other books, it will use the life from uh, this screen. Okay, these are the some of the date considerations. Uh, commencement date uh, is the actual date when you want any financial transactions to happen in the system. So it could be in the past or it could be in the future. Uh, so commencement date is very important. No financial transaction can be performed prior to the commencement date. And termination date is of course the uh, end of the lease term. Um, so and the lease sign date is of course just informational um, when the lease was signed. The accounting date actually determines when the transaction gets booked, accounted in which period. Why this is important is that if you have a lease going back to like January and your accounting date is today, then the accounting for the transaction will be performed in the current month and system will take the prior period depreciation and prior period lease payments until April and book it along with current month expense. So the accounting date, you cannot backdate it if the periods are closed. Uh, it has to be in an open period. So the accounting date is very key uh, because that's where you see the ROU balance is getting blocked. The in-service date, this we also call the transaction date. The lease start date or the transaction date is actually used as the in-service date, uh, the commencement date on the top of the screen. So that's going to be your in-service date uh, when the asset is created uh, from the lease admin. Yeah, see the last one is the difference between the accounting date and the commencement date. Uh, commencement date, you can say if you are familiar with asset management, it's like a transaction date. So the difference between uh, the commencement date and accounting date will be treated as the prior period lease payments and uh, prior period depreciation. Excellent. Okay, uh, really quickly, let's talk, Lax, about integrations 
and I'll, I'll ask the participants if uh, I am I am keeping an eye on the questions. So if you have any, go ahead and throw them in the in the uh, question section. I don't see any yet, so we'll just keep plugging away. Um, and uh, th there may be more questions that, that pop up when people's uh, caffeine from their coffee <laughs> kicks in, um, and we'll uh, we'll we'll, we'll move forward until I see questions. We'll just keep plugging away. You want to talk about integrations? The lease admin itself is, uh, even though the whole asset lifecycle management has a lot of boxes, from a leasing point of view, the lease admin interacts with asset management. Um, it can create the assets in asset management system if the route that's what you take uh, for AP, which obviously is uh, what you want um, and then it has an integration with the accounts payable for payable leases so it can issue payments uh, if you are using the um, lease admin to ap interface uh, for payments we typically see 50 percent of the clients not using that functionality because they have a ap process which is little more complicated and some clients do use that functionality some clients don't and we also see clients going live without using the AP integration, then bringing on AP integration later. So we see a mix of those. And the lease admin then actually integrates with the billing module now, via the customer contracts module. Uh, so it creates invoices for the revenue leases. Then it integrates with the GL for straight line accounting for revenue leases and also straight line accounting for uh, payable leases that are not non-based rent items with escalations. So lease admin integrates with AM, AP, uh, billing, and GL. Those are the integrations. Uh, there is no integration between lease admin and project costing directly. So whatever you need uh, in terms of project costing, uh, tracking has to go, out, go as GL. We good? All right, let's, let's talk uh, about a comparison of the different accounting bases now. Okay, yeah, so we try to uh, uh, capture here a summary of what, what's all uh, there in different accounting methods. So under AC842, which is FASB, uh, we do have uh, finance leases and there are also operating leases. Okay. And and the right of use asset lease obligation um, are there in AC842, so are like it's under IFRS and as well as GASB. Okay. Uh, going back to the first one, which is finance leases, finance leases are there in AC842, uh, they are also there in IFRS and GASB 87. There are no operating leases in IFRS 16 and GASB 87. The right of asset. Um, right of use asset is common across all three same thing with lease obligation and on the lease receivable deferred inflows that's only a requirement for the gas b87 and the lease receivable amortization is again a gas b87 requirement this is where the gap comes into play and the depreciation expense uh, is applicable to all three but under ac 842 it's only applicable for finance leases. Um, same thing with interest expense, um, applicable to all three, but under AC 842, it's only for finance leases. The exemption from lease is uh, IFRS and GASB 87 related. Uh, there is no such ruling on AC 842. Uh, any lease that's less than um, or equal like 12 months, up to 12 months is exempt from uh, GASB 87 accounting uh, in the new world. There is no such exemption in AC 842. So the ROI amortization, it's more on um, what you call AC 842, but it's only for operating leases under AC 842. So we will pause there for a minute and see if the, anyone has any you know questions or anything we can answer before we move on. I'll remind them I am monitoring the open questions. I think I'm doing it right. Currently no open questions. Um, I am not monitoring the chat window, the, 
but I am in the Q and A section. So, okay. Max, I'm not seeing any come in. Um, you're doing good, Randy. There's nothing. <clears throat> there's nothing that's come in yet. You're not seeing them either. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Uh, well, well, we'll move forward, and and hopefully everyone's got their coffee and it's kicking in. Uh, let's talk gaps here for a second. Um, Lax, let's go through these and let's highlight this last bullet um, two or three times. <laughs> sure. Okay. The People's of Lease Admin itself is fully compliant for payable leases. Um, the one consideration there is that uh, if uh, a gas B87 is, um, has um, need to account for the funds in the general fund and then uh, non-general fund, so we have to give some thought as to how the lease expense get booked into a general uh, fund and not lease expense, the uh, ROU expensed on day one, and then how it get um, uh, depreciated or amortized. So that's something uh, uh, needs to be given thought to. The second thing is the people's soft lease admin is not compliant for receivable leases. It means like Oracle did not build at least until now, um, uh, the deferred inflows functionality for uh, revenue leases and the gas VAT cell. We have seen most of the um, higher ed and the state agencies or fed agencies having some receivable leases that needs uh, the deferred inflows accounting and that's a missing piece. And that is what we are actually going to um, build uh, next few weeks. Hopefully by end of June, we have a working model. Uh, uh, then we'll keep uh, adding more functionality into that uh, development that we are doing over a period of time. Right. Our, our goal is that uh, with, with the solution we're building, that, that PeopleSoft lease administration will be fully GASB 87 compliant. Um, and there have been a number of, of public sector uh, higher ed organizations that have uh, either purchased or are awaiting to purchase the module. And I should call out if you don't own, if you didn't own real estate management and you haven't purchased the lease administration module, it is a separate license uh, that, uh, that needs to be purchased from Oracle. Uh, or, by the way, through Spear MC, we are an authorized reseller for that. Uh, so if you're, if you're looking for quotes on the license as well as implementation, we can, we can help for both. Uh, but, but that, once you have that license, our solution will make GASB 87 fully compliant on all forms. And, and the other thing I'll point out is the revenue side, right? Uh, sometimes you're tricked into or lulled into thinking you don't have revenue leases uh, when in fact you do. Uh, there, are, there are hidden leases out there that, that people uh, have forgotten about. Um, oftentimes you, you could have lacks a sublet situation where you've got where you're leasing um, office space or, or building space and you're not using it all and you turn around and you sublet it. Now that all of a sudden becomes a revenue lease. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's these, these uh, revenue leases that are really there um, that, that, that you need to be mindful of. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. There is one, uh, it's not on the slide, but a common question that we normally get is that, can we use AM shared functionality? Because AM has the leasing functionality in 840 world and Oracle said there is a shared LF lease admin functionality that clients can use if they don't want to use the, um, don't want to license the lease admin. So there are a couple of things there. You could use a shared lease, uh, shared lease admin functionality without licensing lease admin only if we have the payable leases. If you have a receivable leases, then you cannot use uh, the shared functionality. You need a full-fledged lease admin license. That's one uh, thing. Second thing is, uh, if we have any non-base rent items that needs uh, an extensive accounting, uh, like operating expenses and other stuff, then the shared um, shared LA functionality doesn't help. So those are two or three considerations uh, uh, that you know everybody needs to um, think through to see if they want to license lease admin or want to go with a shared 
lease admin functionality. Good point. Um, Lax, I think the next step is for you to, uh, to do a product demonstration. Um, you prepared to do that if yeah. I were to pass the sharing to you? Yes, I can, I can start sharing, okay? All right. Okay, let's see. Share screen. Perfect. Okay. So here is um, a quickly run through the same slides in a live system so that you can see what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can put up this. So this is what we were referring to earlier in one of the slides, activating the Gatsby 87. So this is what we do. Uh, check this checkbox to activate the lease accounting. If you don't do this, then uh, the accounting needs to happen different way. So uh, for lack of better terminology, if you don't select this checkbox, it works in a pre uh, fast way, like in a Gatsby 87 world where the lease expense is booked on a monthly basis and there is no right of use of it, okay? Once we activate the lease admin for installation options, lease admin, then we go into the asset management and this field will open up only when we activate the lease admin installation options. So we map the lease expense here. Then of course, we briefly talk about the business unit setup. And I'll first talk about the asset management business unit setup. This window. Okay. okay, so here is the lease book that needs to be mapped. If you don't map this, then you don't see any of the new categories appearing in the um, uh, appearing in the lease admin pages. Then, of course, the lease admin business unit itself. Here is where, where we map the uh, business units. Uh, as you see, uh, it requires GL, asset management and AP. The contracts is optional. If you have revenue leases, the contracts should be treated as essential or required. And here is the accounting entry templates checkbox. It typically selected that so that all the accounting for payable leases comes through the accounting entry templates. Then at the further bottom down, is where you see the recognize the capitalized assets under GASB 87. It's at a business unit level. Okay, so if you have uh, any business unit that's doing the leases under GASB 87, we need to select this. This business unit is not selected because right now we have set this as FASB. We have another business unit that goes under GASB. Uh, having shown that, and then I'll also show the cost types a little bit. Um, some of you may have seen the cost type screen. I just will point out what the changes that you see with the lease admin implementation. So when you open up a cost type, if you normally don't see these three check boxes on the right side of the screen, these three check boxes will only be available once you activate the lease admin uh, installation options. Okay, and there will be three, at least three cost types that you have to create, one mapping to each. There is one for rent expense, one for lease incentives, one for lease remeasurement. Okay. Then I think the next thing is on the category codes. Uh, So the, uh, for GASB 87, you're going to have a category. Again, this lease assets checkbox will only come into play uh, for leases. 
and this will be set as a depreciable uh, and uh, it will be leased marked as a leased assets then of course the last thing on this one not last thing prior to the last thing was the profiles where you have a profile that's mapped with a the acquisition code as leased and this is important this has to be this way and then for gas b87 it will be marked as depreciable okay so that is that one and the last piece is the accounting entry templates we'll talk about the accounting entry templates and this is what we were saying in mass um, Lex, when did this uh, in mass come out? In, do you know which image? It's probably 24 or somewhere is, I think it came, I don't exactly recollect, but this is a nice tool. It could be earlier than that, but I happen to see it on 24. Okay. okay. So this is where, this is a run control page, as you can see, and then you see the different set of accounts. And a lot of times what we get a question is that, oh, we don't use this. So like, why do we have, you know, what you call uh, a gain or a loss? Or why do we have a uh, few other things here that you don't really use, like a, a removal contract or proceeds? Typically, you don't have proceeds on a leased assets. But um, what the system is trying to do is it's trying to accommodate for every transaction that can happen, like, uh, add you know add adjust re recap retire so it will go up and build the uh, templates for all those things it needs these accounts and they may not get used uh, a lot of times like uh, proceeds and removal contracts they never get used but we do have to map them and based on what we see here as you can see here the transcodes the system creates the um, it builds the template for all these cost types, all these transcodes for all the uh, trans types, which is like the seven trans types that we have, add, adjust, take, add, retire. Mm -hmm. So if you can see like there are about 20 cost types here and 20 transcodes, that's 40 and then seven times, uh, yeah, that's like 280 plus something. So the system will create all those things in one shot instead of us setting up. So we typically go this route and then adjust only those things that we need to adjust. Okay. So this is a nice feature that has been uh, introduced in later versions of people. So okay, any questions on config before I can just bring up a screen and uh, show you the lease. Any questions, CC Randy? Uh, I got one answer uh, and it's from a uh, customer of ours and, and she, Let's us know that the accounting entry templates in mass is actually available in PUM 33. So uh, later than, than what you thought. And, and that's, uh, thank you for that. Okay, thank you. So, okay. So it's now answered. Okay, good. On the payable leases side, if you have seen the demo, uh, you have to excuse us. We just want to, I'm sure there are some, um, participant that may not have this in the screens. I've just walked through this. So this is the lease uh, screen header and you see the exam fund rec recognition. And this is for leases that are shorter, less than um, or equal to 12 months. So one, once you select this, then it works in a free gas B87 world where there is no ROU, there is no lease obligation, nothing. Okay, so we'll take off this one. And here is a lease screen. I can't type. Okay. And you see the commencement date, termination date, lease sign date. We talked about these things. There are additional details here that you don't really uh, need to worry about, but if there is a need, uh, you can track additional dates. And there is a lease administrator and he, this is a person that's responsible for entering a lease. And portfolio manager is someone that's actually approving the lease. And lease ID. 
and here is the financial terms screen where we add a base rent and here is where you can see start date and dates which will be derived from the main screen and here is amount by square feet or amount by the uh, amount actual amount and here is the schedule when the payment is considered due and you typically tell the system whether it's going to be advanced or uh, in arrears and then once there is a this config is missing that's why the interest rate did not come this is a discount rate once you save this lease and it will calculate the net present value of the lease payment and that would be your right of use asset and your starting position for lease obligation and once we activate the lease an asset is created using this piece of information and let me finish this also and then you can you have an option to create an asset from here which is what you typically choose for payable leases because you want your asset cost to be the present value of the lease payment Lax, while you're uh, while you're typing, we do have a question. So uh, this is great. the The question is about the uh, the guidance from GASB eighty seven on extending the date of uh, uh, of compliance, mm -hmm. and if we have any further definitive statements. I I don't think the final extension date has been made, Lax. Unless you you've heard differently. We know they've extended until next year, but we don't know the official date. Right, I think uh, the, because FASB is extending and GASB is also extending. So it's 99% possibility that they would extend the adoption date by a year. So it might be as early as, you know, July next year for some clients in higher ed world. And it could be different depending upon your, when your fiscal year starts for 2021. We, we are expecting it's fiscal year 21 mm -hmm. that is the compliance period. Yes. Yep. Yeah, here is where what happens when you create the lease. And here is the see the asset ID. Once you activate the lease, it automatically creates an asset in the asset management system. And it will derive the, the present value ROA asset cost, okay? So this is what it's going to be. <clears throat> so from that point onwards, then asset management will manage all the accounting for the monthly expense. Lease admins only pushes the asset information back to asset management then you follow the asset management pieces for dipper calc and am accounting entries and the depreciation flows those processes will not change okay so that's uh, how a lease screen looks like and then uh, what's a nutshell what higher level dates you do have other options um, like uh, options critical dates and everything like some clients use it some clients don't use it uh, Again, one of the things that we are doing is to build up a FASB reset revenue leases uh, customization or bolt on that would eventually uh, have this um, uh, deferred info schedule built up. So that's something that we are working. So I think uh, we are almost, I think at about five minutes away from, I think. Uh, right we are. We are, Tom. Can uh, so I, I actually did see two questions. So it looks like they are out there. Uh, but if we don't start getting questions, I'm going to start picking off names. All right, I'm kidding. Uh, go ahead and and, uh, and shoot your questions in the question and answer se section if you would. While we're waiting, Lax, do you have any? parting uh, words of wisdom for, for these folks that are considering embarking on, on a uh, implementation? I think the, a lot of times the, uh, we see clients, not everyone, a lot of clients uh, ignoring the fact 
uh, data extraction because data extraction is a big thing. A lot of times we run into uh, an implementation that said, oh, we don't know what leases we have. That's something that should be done before you even kick off the project. You need to have a decent, um, uh, what you call it, at least 75 to 90% of the leases at least extracted before you even start the implementation. Otherwise, it's just the implementation team comes and they don't have much to do. It's just, um, I think, not uh, efficient or cost effective. Uh, for the client. So that's something that needs to be, you know, uh, addressed first step. The second thing is engage someone that has done this to bring as an advisor, not necessarily, you know, a full-time resource that can at least talk, say, oh, you need, uh, I, I was at a client recently, they were missing like eight pieces of information. They had 600 leases extent. So when we said these eight pieces of information is needed, they had to go back to those 600 leases, pull that document to get that information. Right. And get someone say, what are the data elements we need uh, to get this work in a gas BAT sound world? So engage someone that has done this, uh, get those data elements lined up uh, before you start data extraction process. So the file that you get out of the abstraction is you know something that we can use. We don't have to revisit back right. uh, to the documents. That I think um, is what I would offer. We do have another question, uh, and it is it, it asking you to expand on the general fund versus uh, non-general fund consideration um, in in payables leases for uh, obviously for commitment control and and uh, government accounting perspective. Yeah, I think the way we were uh, explained this is that when you activate a lease and a write-off use asset gets created, it needs to be expensed in the general fund on day one. Um, uh, day one, and then, but the monthly expense that you take will have to be come out of a different fund, offsetting the general fund. That's what we were explained. Um, we still are uh, having some discussions with um, uh, some of my friends at Oracle. Um, so to see how this all is going to play out, I think that's at least what we have right now. Okay. And, and on the transition date, right? Hmm. The question is, can the transition date be set ahead of time, right? It's a one-time event that, that is, I guess, irreversible, correct? Yeah. So we, you can set this transition date today. Okay. But the accounting is all based on the trans lease start date uh, is when the accounting comes into play, or the calculation comes into play. Now, of course, accounting happens based on the accounting date. So there is no harm in backdating the leases um, or the, on the installation option, the transition date, no harm in doing it. But there is one thing that need to know, a lot of times what we have is the client saying, okay, I have a lease sitting there for 10 years, I'm going to convert with the start date 10 years back. So in the first month, you do see a prior period lease payments and prior period depreciation in the first month and a huge number. So most of the clients that we work with said, okay, we are going to treat the lease the way it is on the transition day. That means every lease will start on a transition day, uh, ignoring the previous periods. So that's what we have seen, but system can accommodate it. One last question, and we're at the at the end here. Uh, is there a number uh, limit of assets that can be tied to a lease? There is no uh, limitation, uh, but there are some challenges uh, when you have multiple assets tied into a single lease. Um, at least in earlier versions, there were uh, known bugs uh, that Oracle has addressed over a period of time. So why would I not say you cannot do it? I would, if there is a way to, um, you know, not do it, that would be great. Unless, you know, we just go through the list of open issues around right. that particular feature. Thank you. We, we have one more, it rolled in. We're at the, uh, at the limit here. Um, and it's actually advice and, and uh, thank you, Nora. Uh, we will, uh, we'll actually post your, your uh, response with the rest of them. Uh, but Tom, I think we're uh, at our limit and um, I don't see any new questions coming in. 
No problem. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Lax. Uh, everyone, just a quick reminder to fill out your session survey. Uh, Randy and Lax would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. Uh, it takes like less than 30 seconds to go click the resources button and click the survey uh, to answer or drop in any notes about the session. Uh, the other thing I want to highlight real quick, go check out that virtual solution center. It's on the uh, website alliance-conference.com. Dot com, uh, the Virtual Solutions Center. A lot of these folks have contact information. You can schedule time. I bet you could even schedule an appointment with Randy, Randy himself if you wanted. Uh, but this would be a chance to um, check out more about Spear MC. And uh, also, you can go um, potentially, some of these folks are giving away some virtual swag. So you might be able to pick up a, a gift card or something like that uh, for scheduling time. That's it. So thank you, uh, Randy. Thank you, Lax. Uh, thank you all for attending and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.